Hello people, uh, Andy here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys had a, a great spring fly fishing season. Uh, I know I had a pretty good April season. I put a video out there, you can go see it. Um, some of the things we experienced. Had a, a May trip as well, mid-May with the uh, sulfurs and the March browns and lots of other flies. Uh, a little bit different. It certainly had um, less activity in the beginning of the week and then it picked up at the end and had a few good nights. Um, it is after Memorial Day and most of us are thinking about our summer plans. Going to the beach, maybe going up the mountains, traveling. Um, some of us are thinking about putting our fly rod away and dreaming about next season. But not me. <laughs> uh, I tend to fly fish uh, off and on throughout the summer um, and try to hit the spots where the trout uh, stay active, where it's water's cold and um, keep that going. Feed my addiction, as you, you might say. Um, so the other thing with people um, preparing for the summer for fly fishing, I just want to touch on an example, just a recent example from a couple nights ago um, where I got into some activity which really marked the transition between spring hatches and summer terrestrial feeding um, and just a couple hours of fishing but it, it gives me an, a reason to talk about and demonstrate some of those changes and some of the things to expect and maybe some change in, changes in your tactics going forward. Um, certainly there's still some good hatches to look forward to, the bluing olives, slate drakes, trichos, uh, white mayfly, and uh, all that. But the terrestrials really do become uh, a main staple for some streams, especially the smaller streams with the canopy and where lots of things, ants and beetles and inchworms and all kinds of stuff can fall in. Um, so I'm gonna give this example. Uh, hopefully it's not too boring. <laughs> I did catch some trout, um, but uh, it still was an interesting um, demonstration where I could witness exactly what was going on in a single night between the spring season and the beginning of the summer season. So with that, let's get started. Uh, try to keep it short. Um, and we'll talk at the end of the video. See ya. So this is a stream in Berks County, Pennsylvania. Uh, I'm not going to name it. It's kind of a small stream and um, gets a good deal of fishing pressure sometimes. Uh, but the neat thing about this stream is it has a fantastic population of wild brown trout. And um, I've fished it for maybe close to 30 years now. Um, only fish it once or twice a year. I come in here in the summer uh, with sake nymphs, you know, for the ice and itch and inchworms and things like that. We get a lot of fish very well in the morning. Uh, but this time of year, this is around the 1st of June, and there is a, um, has been a tremendous spinner fall here of Cahill. Um, spinners right around the end of May 1st of June um, and a couple years ago I had a tremendous night here I think I got 20 um, on a very relatively small section stream but um, the, even though there's fishing pressure here the trout uh, hold their own and the another interesting thing about this stream being a geologist, I was like, why is this stream so good where it is? And um, there, it's a, a cut above any other small stream up in this area. And um, it turns out there's a, an unusual situation here where the limestone, this is actually a limestone. It's a partial limestone, a freestone and limestone. And the limestone sits on top of the hill, which is a very odd situation. Usually it's in the valley, but in this situation, there's a chunk of um, limestone in a little valley up above. Uh, go around the bend a few times, and boom, you're in the farm country. <clears throat> and there's some springs in there that keep this cold all year round, keep the chemistry good, and um, 
that favors this population of brown trout. Um, relatively short section you can get in and fish, and there's a lot of it that's just you can't get in. It's all posted, but um, I want to try fishing here. There's already been a few trout rising, but uh, I don't think we're going to have the spinner fall we had two years ago, which was so thick. Trout were coming up everywhere. It's just amazing. Um, I got a couple ones that were 12, close to 13 inches that day for a small stream like this. It's a big fish. Uh, so that's it. That's a good sign. Nice little brownie. About five inches. Beautiful little wild fish. So this is um, kind of proof that the limestone is up here. This is a chunk of uh, limestone from up upstream that's been brought down here. You can see it's gray. See the bedding on it. Um, and then amid it, all this other older Precambrian rock. This is probably Ordovician, low grade metamorphic, and then on top of it is the, uh, the older stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm below is the older stuff. Nine inch wild brown I just got out of here. Uh, right out of this section right here and um, this one took the inchworm so these fish are starting to transition from feeding on duns and spinners and caddises to terrestrials um, inchworms come on pretty early here you can get them dropping out of the trees anytime from mid-may mid-may on they grow pretty quickly so i'm gonna let them go for the next one the other amazing thing about this stream is just the bedrock structure. This stream is coming from the upper valley uh, through all this. Basically, I think it's quartzite. Um, and nice. And it changes as you go downstream, but it's the structure cold water uh, that provides the habitat for these fish. Um, certainly wish there was more of it to fish, but it's just a great place. It's a nicer brown. And it took the inchworm right off the bank over there. And 11 inch fish right there, beautiful. There are sunfish here. So that's an interesting combo. Wild brown trout and bluegills. Not too bad little bluegill here. So you can see how low the water's been here. Uh, this is June 1st. And this is not typical. We're in a borderline drought, if not that, if not in a drought. And it's not supposed to rain significantly for the next 10 days. And you can kind of see the normal water line here. Uh, doesn't bode well for the summer unless we start getting rain. Um, we just haven't had the thunderstorms. Not much of anything. Beautiful weather. Bright, sunny, some warm days, but then it cools down uh, almost like western where by 7, 8 o'clock, it's getting cool. Today's an exception. It's going to be warm tonight, tomorrow, and then it's going to cool down again. But, uh, got to have water to have a stream. <laughs> so sometimes it's low like this, but this is pretty early in the season. A bit of a better fish here. And took the inch one. That's number seven. Little guy. This one took the um, sulfur I have on. Hopefully you can see these, but there are um, sulfur spinners. Assuming there are sulfur spinners over the water right about now. It's 8.30, nearly dark, and um, because of the heat and the low water, the spinners just decide to come out now. Uh, it was 85 today here. So, 
You're here. Nice. My guess that these are um, Ephemerella Dorothea, which is the, the smallest of the three. Or maybe there's two now, but they're three uh, sulfur species. They tend to be later in the season. Um, and it's almost dark here. I uh, just waited until it was darker, primarily because of the temperature of the water and the temperature of the air. Um, I'm getting them both on a spinner and inchworms. This is kind of a neat combination of summer and late, late spring fishing. Uh, if, it, if it's going to happen anywhere, it would be here on this spinner. Pretty neat. Now they're getting thick. So you can see them just hanging in a cloud over the ripples. They're kind of attracted to the heaviest water. And they'll sit over there. And in a few minutes, they'll mate, fall in the water, I'll lay their eggs, and it'll all be over. What a life. Huh. So I'm finishing up. Uh, it's about it's 9 o'clock. It's very dark. This camera actually makes it look a lot lighter. I can barely see. Um, but I got 10. And in about, I don't know, Two, two hours, two and a half hours of fishing. Not too bad. Uh, water is extremely low. Uh, fisher in here, obviously. And I was catching trout on sulfurs and inchworms in tandem. Uh, and they're very keyed in as much on this inchworm as the sulfur. So again, what I was trying to say is this time of year, they start to shift over, get more interested in terrestrials. Uh, in a stream like this, it's got a great canopy. So the, these kinds of drop-ins sustain these fish all throughout the summer. Um, great population here. Very uh, beautiful wild fish. Dark color. Lots of dark deep spots. And uh, they, like I said, they hold their own. So that's my little weekday trip to a unknown... Some people might know it, but I'm not going to say it, but unknown trout stream in Berks County, Pennsylvania. Uh, with um, a limestone influence, which makes this uh, interesting, rich, and cold stream uh, for this area. So I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the observations, uh, perspectives, regarding this couple hours of fishing um, in a small stream in Berks County, Pennsylvania. Um, first, uh, I think what I was witnessing today was that transition from spring feeding patterns to summer feeding patterns. Um, and this is a shift that is bound to happen on almost every trout stream. Uh, when that happens depends on the stream, really. Um, and the hatches that are there uh, and uh, water temperatures, water levels. But it, it's often around this time of year, early June into the middle part of June. Uh, in this particular stream, there's some good hatches, but you know, by the first end of the first week of June, by the middle of June, those evening hatches are pretty much over uh, and everything else is more sporadic. There's plenty of bug life here. Uh, and the trout start to shift into, uh, with, especially with warmer temperatures, morning fishing, morning feeding, and um, focus on terrestrials. Uh, and, and that subtle shift sometimes happens abruptly, sometimes it doesn't. And in this case, these fish were uh, keyed in on sulfurs, uh, some duns, and then spinners uh, this evening, and then uh, an inchworm. Uh, and I pretty much put the inchworm on because I know they work good here, but also um, the fact that they weren't rising too much when I first got there. And I just wanted to do some prospecting. So um, a tandem arrangement with a dry fly and a nymph, or maybe two dry flies, works really well uh, to when you come to a stream and make an assessment of what's going on what they might be feeding on, if you have a hunch what they might be feeding on. Um, and in the first couple minutes, I got 
a trout on a sulfur uh, emerger and a um, inchworm within you know a couple minutes of each other and some of the fish that were rising to sulfurs hit the inchworm so these guys are opportunistic and that's another uh, thing I want to talk about is um, the differences in trout populations uh, some trout populations assist the systems that they're in the, the hatches they, they have um, pretty much um, dictate how the trout are gonna respond uh, to feeding opportunities in this case you know these hatches come and go um, and they're going to um, shift to whatever they, they need to um, so this is a stream where opportunistic feeding is much more common especially after the first week of June into the um, summer and fall months. Um, so just something to think about is uh, tailor your approach to the stream based on your knowledge of the stream and what the fish are going to be doing. Um, and another thing is inchworms work really well uh, from June on through October even into November. Uh, so keep those guys in your box uh, if nothing else is happening. Um, I have had situations where I'm standing there and an inchworm drops out of a tree, hanging on a thread right in front of me and drops into the water. So th this is a real thing. Um, they are reacting to that thing very in a primitive way, but um, they've seen them before and they, they work very well. And uh, you can even fish them during hatches and spinner falls like this in certain streams to catch fish. Um, another theme I want to talk about here is um, the fact that I've been coming to this stream for 30 years now. Um, and the first day I came here was on a June 1st. Around there, I hit a wonderful um, spinner fall and I learned to come back here every June 1st around and get the same thing. Uh, I keep a journal and the journal um, is a good record of what's going on on the stream. And that allows me to predict what I'm gonna find, come back, of similar conditions and you know maybe learn something about uh, how the variation within the stream happens. Uh, another observation I'd like to mention is the fact that there's always a good reason for a good trout stream all right it's um, sometimes it's a tailwater right it's artificially uh, maintained with a bottom release from a reservoir which is still a good situation and creates trout habitat and that's great. In natural systems, there's always something that causes that. And a lot of it is <coughs> hydrology. I've, I talked about geology in another video. If you go look for it, uh, go into detail on one particular area in the state of Pennsylvania, um, where geology is key to maintaining a, a trout fishery that's just fantastic. Um, so there's always a reason for a trout stream to exist in the wild ground trout population. Part of its manage management, the right management uh, on the human's perspective of the fishery. Uh, but in this case, a little trout stream, and this is not, I mean, this is a great little stream, but it's maintained because there's a chunk of limestone sitting on the top of a hill, which is a very odd geologic situation for this area. Uh, and it took me a year or two to figure that out, even though I'm a geologist and I'm like, what is going on with this stream? Why is this, you know, uh, so good? And uh, eventually noodled it out and I found out and that, that's exactly what's going on. Is there uh, several freestoners drop into a um, sort of elevated limestone valley, isolated, uh, springs are produced and pop out and you have a sort of a hybrid limestone freestone stream that then exits the hills and uh, creates a really nice um, trout stream where the structure is, maintains it all summer. So there's a reason for all this to happen. Um, and, you know, be curious. There's a lot, a lot of different situations out there. Um, one thing I'd like to say again is, you know, look at the Pennsylvania trout. Um, there's an app for looking at wild trout populations. They're all over the state. There's situations you can find that nobody ever knows about you might be able to get in and do some great uh, fishing and uh, finally uh, we're in a drought right now that's a bad situation um, Pennsylvania I'll, I'll show you this map here that shows the um, the drought situation on uh, regional streams and, and you can see that it's just bad 
Um, this bodes very poorly for the summer unless we get rain. I think we're not planning to get rain based on the forecast for quite a long time. And um, I've seen this before. And if it's this bad in certain streams in the beginning of June, this is when streams are kind of brimming a bit. There's still a good amount of flow. Uh, that maintains them through the hot summer months, and it's just not there in some of these streams. Uh, and I kind of warned about this when I fished Penn's Creek in April. I was like, wow, this is kind of low for April, and we had one good rain, and then it stopped again. So um, that's going to affect um, the risks the trout have, um, primarily thermal, uh, when the water's low and it gets hot and there's not much to sustain it. The... Um, uh, the, tr the trout will start to suffer, you know. And the next thing that's the biggest thing is predation. Once the water gets low, predators like mink and things like that, herons, kind of isolate those fish in those areas that they can congregate in. If it's where a spring-fed creek comes in, and just pick them off. I've seen it a number of times. So uh, something to worry about for the summer. We can't make it rain, right? I said in my video that without rain, we won't. without water, we can't have a stream. Uh, we can do some praying maybe it's going to start raining soon but and eventually it will but um just something to think about maybe lay off on trout don't target them if they're just trying to hold into areas where it's cold so so anyway those are my thoughts for a very quick couple hours fishing locally here and um hope you enjoyed it um hope there was something in there that was of value to you and um just remember even then when the hatches end there's lots of fishing left and uh, have fun out there and good luck.